What up, guys? Jason Guyman here, along with, I know we ain't got the best view of the camera, but it'll be all right. We'll get the information out of it. And we have another Jason. So it's Jason and Jason. So um, we're going to talk about just kind of Jason's story. Um, he came into the membership and he, um, the other night, about a couple weeks ago, and was like, dude, I got a story to tell. And so I want to hear that story. And you all need to hear that story too. So let's get started and get moving here. And so Jason, tell me a little bit of who are you, where are you from, that kind of stuff, a little background. So I'm 46 from northern Michigan. Um, most of the work's right here in a town called Traverse City. It's a nice part of Michigan, right on the on Lake Michigan on a bay called Traverse Bay. Um, I actually got introduced to pressure washing outside of high school. I worked for a masonry restoration company. Um, it was a, a union job making like 20 bucks an hour as a, you know, fresh out of high school with Benny's and all that. And it was the laborers union working for a masonry restoration company. And, and basically those guys couldn't do it because of their, their contracts. So I did all the pressure wash and brick cleaning and things like that. And I was 18 and spraying water and liked it, but I got away from that and went into uh, sales. I was in the insurance and I was a loan officer for a long time and spent about 15 years with Farm Bureau and my wife wanted to, we were in West Michigan down towards Grand Rapids and my wife wanted to move up here um, so we did it and then COVID hit so it was a little funky last year and the job market's really weird up here because um, it's kind of resorty there's a lot of people that have money and then there's a huge disparity you're either you're servicing the people with the money type in a resort type town. So I was, I was working, I wanted to go to work for this window company and work in their sales department. And then I kind of backdoored my way into their marketing department first and then realized I didn't really want to work for them. They, their structure was shit. Their pay was decent, but they're, they were working a lot, you know, they're working 70 hours a week, six plus days a week. And I want balance, you know, so I was scrolling through the internet and came across Jason Guyman on YouTube and got sucked into watching all these videos. And I'm like, I, I've done that in the past, you know, it was 25 years ago now or whatever, but uh, I'm like, that was fun. I actually liked it. You know, it's, as far as manual labor goes, there's worse things that you could be doing. And uh, just kind of started diving in and got your membership and said, I'm I'm not one to reinvent the wheel. So I just shut up and do what you are telling me to do, and it's working. So when did you start pressure washing then? Uh, my first job was May 3rd. So you're just pre fresh out of this year starting – and what, what are some things when you started, um, obviously you had to work and get marketing going, but what are some things that were, um, uh, things you had to work through to get learning the process and stuff? Um, you know, not being afraid to stay that number, um, you know, what it's going to be, you know, like you, and you've said it a bunch of times we are not our customers, you know, and I've kind of known that with my, some of my history, but yeah, someone like myself who would probably go rent something or buy something to do it themselves. I'm not who I'm looking for, you know? So you got, I had to get that out of my head a little bit and uh, yeah, just build some value in your, in yourself and your service. And, you know, even despite I hadn't really touched a power washer much in 20 years, I still just by educating myself before I even before my uh, machine even got delivered, I had more knowledge than 90 percent of the people out wandering around. So and then just been kind of earning my chops here this summer and uh, it's been going well. So why did you have so you, you just left? So when you moved up there, that's when you quit um, the Farm Bureau. Is that the case? Yeah, yep. I was working remotely for a little bit, then the whole Rona thing happened, and then, um, yeah, I just kind of packed it in with that, and uh, was, my wife, she's a hygienist, and she does all right. We can live off her 
wages, you know, but uh, we were kind of tight and I like working some bullshit job and was like, I'm better than this, you know, I can figure something out. So uh, what's that? The mother invention is the mother of necessity or how's that go? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, <laughs> so, so tell me a little bit about your journey of coming, getting jobs and stuff like that a little bit. So, um, I knew that I would have to, yeah, get some marketing material. And so I did what you said. I got some signs pretty much. Yeah. I think there was some photos on your website or you explained it, um, ordered some, the first ones I got were kind of small and I didn't like them, but I put them out and then I ordered some bigger ones. It's worth the money to stand out. Cause there's a handful of different companies that use the sign so you know I, I didn't really go super cheap but i think i can get 50 of them dropped to the door for 300 bucks or something and they're a couple colors and two foot by two foot or two foot by 30 or something and i just started putting those things everywhere nailing them to poles at the stoplights on the busy roads putting them you know the job sites and when it comes to signs it's I track everything through my client management system and I get really good results off the signs. Now they often do go to Google to kind of find me sometimes and I'm paying for some Google ads there too. So it takes, you know, it's a, like a spoke, you know, a wheel with some spokes on it. There's numerous facets to get it, but the signs, I get great response. In fact, the job I did, one of the jobs I did today, she's like, Oh, I can be like the rest of town and have one of your signs in my yard. <laughs> so, uh, I started with that, you know, ordered some business cards and door hangers, but you know, I was pretty fortunate and besides like five rounds or, you know, um, I haven't had to hit the streets too hard, but you know, yeah, I do exactly what your system says. I, you know, put pressure washing on it, you know, my phone number and yep. Did my five rounds, did my. Uh, uh, Google my business, but everything you said to do up front, I did Google my business, you know, have it all set up and a web page, but it's simple. It's right through Google, uploading my photos to it. Like I said, my, I, my tip to you would be to, I'm no rocket science. Just do what somebody else has done before. And, you know, some people will say market and this and that, but so yeah, some markets you might be able to squeeze an extra 10, 20, 15% out of the gross on it, but you can still get it. And I would say I'm tracking it. I'm surprised I'm averaging $761 a job. And so your and average ticket right now is $761 a job. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I'm closing about 61%. So I'm still, you know, and that's kind of where I wanted to be. I mean, I've been in sales in the past and shit if 30, 40% was outstanding, you know, so I'm so close in 50, 60 and, and I, and I'm right there and it's, it's comfortable. You know, it's, a, it's good. I could probably squeeze out more and do less, but it's, I'm working at a good pace. And, um, so how much have you brought in this year then? Just shy of 70 grand i think i looked today as like 68 and change since may 3rd so you've done seventy thousand dollars this year since may so yeah that is freaking amazing so let's talk a little bit about pricing and sales and we're going to go down that road being that you are kind of on the sales side of things um and yeah. i think this is one of the things that a lot of people struggle with they, they struggle on, and, and basically how you're getting those prices is, is obviously you're, you're bidding them right and you know how to close. So let's hit on how do we close good? Because 61% is actually really good. In fact, I would even say you could raise prices a little bit more. I always, you know, I'm always saying that 50 to 60%, but obviously you're sitting pretty pretty right now at that, seven, you know, at that 60%. So that's good. Now, Here's the other thing that a lot of people got to remember too is is you got to remember he's in northern Michigan. Basically, you don't start till May. Um, you know, you're you're not starting. You might get the end of April, but you're not really starting till May. 
And so, and you're probably, when's your season going to be up? When's it start freezing again up there? Probably in oh, October? I, October? Yeah, I can get through all of October, I think. And then it might be able to get a handful of weeks in in March or November. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I got to hustle here because the days are getting shorter and the clock and the calendars, the pages are flipping, you know? So. And, and you don't, did you ever get a website built or are we just still working on signs and no, referrals? I did the, right through Google, you know, they're pretty basic website. Just, I know I needed one, you know, you need your Google, my business, need a website, nothing fancy. Just got to have one in your marketing materials in a client management system. I get so many compliments. I use Mark 8. It's 30, 40 bucks a month. It helps me track all this stuff so I know what I'm doing. And I, it's so easy. Like I come out of the store with buying, you know, SH or whatever, take a picture of my receipt right then, real quick. Everything's done. I mean, it's pretty slick. And, and I get tons of compliments from my customers because it, I send my quotes through there. I send, hey, I'm on my way. Hey, we've started, done. I mean, it, if you're not using one of those, you have to. You have to use one. You just, and, I can't. And, and I'm going to hit on something before that. Yes, he did 70000 in four months. And yes, you can do that too. But you can hear what he's saying. He's doing a lot of the little things. A lot of times, we don't do the little things. And obviously, you're in sales. And so you know how important that is. But, you know, hey, we're on our way. We're doing the job. We're doing this. These are the little things that are going to set you apart. So when you do get that five-star review, it's going to be an amazing five-star review. And so this is the importance of doing this. And, and you know, he moved up there. So it's not like you were up there all the time and you had this huge connection of community up there. You just kind of went up there, got started, and now you're just taking off in a brand new area. Is that correct? That's absolutely correct. I I don't know five people here. I mean, I've met more, I've done 116 jobs and I, I don't know five people up here by their first name. You know, that's it. So yeah, I didn't walk into some good old boy thing and you know yeah so it's just been said i tell me what to do and i'll do it <laughs> yep. and as nevin shield put it's marquette is the one that's did it so um so this is definitely something that you know you can do and so what are some things in sales that we can do to help close higher clients? Well, you know, obviously the first thing is, is you're not your client. We was on, we was actually talking about this before we got on here. Uh, you kind of felt bad for that $700, $650, $700 roof clean that took you an hour. But what are some other things that you can do to help with sales side of things? Well, you know, touch on that for a minute. I mean, the customer, sees you there for an hour but a good customer or if they feel say anything there's a lot that goes into that leading up to that hour or two while you're on the job site you know and the expenses to occur that you know to get that job and to keep your business right insurance and marketing and you know taxes so you know it, it's a fleeting thought and it there was someone doing the the uh, chimney there and they left her scaffolding up. So I did, it made it real easy for me. So I'm like, I almost felt guilty for a minute, but I did get over it. Um, but yeah, the roof jobs are good. And so what are some things that you started? To, I mean, obviously you're selling packages, I'm assuming, because otherwise you wouldn't have that high of a ticket. Is that correct? Yeah. Yep. Yep. There's apps in there um, for sure. So, I mean, I really lean on my, that client management system pretty hard because, I mean, it tells me where to, where to be, where I'm supposed to be, what I'm doing, but it delivers the message for me. So, you know, I'll get a, I'll get a, somebody will reach out to me and I answer my phone. And if I don't, I'm almost embarrassed. I work with headsets on so I can hear my phone ring or text. Um, so... And then plus the customer, if they're milling around, they'll kind of leave you alone too if you got some headsets on. Um, but I answer the phone and then I tell them, hey, do me a huge favor. Can you text me your, your name, your address and email address? I'll get you put in my client management system. I'll get you put on my schedule and we'll come out there and take a look at it. 
Um, and, and then they get, you know, short, you know, might be towards the end of the day, depending on what I do, but I do get them put in that client management system. I get them put on the schedule, you know, and so they get a reminder, Hey, uh, Inca pro wash is coming out, uh, Friday at noon or whatever it is. And they get a heads up about it. I tell them when I'm leaving, uh, Hey, I'm going to be there in 20 minutes. So it, it just those little bits of communication. And I, I, I run the whole business through that relatively inexpensive piece of software and it makes it easy because people don't necessarily, everyone wants to text these days too. And it's weird. I closed one last night texting at nine o'clock at night, you know, and she came back. She's like, Oh, your price was a little higher than I thought. And then, it, then I thought it would be. And then she quite, you know, what about my vegetation? And I tried calling her and she wanted to text. So I do like try to get, talk to people because i missed her while she was at home gotcha. uh, but inspected the property but i'm like we'll take excellent care of your home and and all your uh, landscaping vegetation and you know you'll be very satisfied with the results she has a lot white siding with a lot of crud on it a bunch of shit on the roof it doesn't need cleaning there's just branches we had a nasty windstorm a bunch of little branches and shit on the roof so and you know, and, and I threw her a bone on that. I'm like, hey, if you let me leave my yard, I, in my contract, I leave a yard sign in for two weeks. I'm like, if you let me leave a yard sign in for three weeks, because she's right by the, the high, one of the schools. I'm like, if you let me leave your sign in there for three weeks, I'll give you an extra 50 bucks off. And she's like, let's do it. You know, and at that point, and that's basically what my job acquisition costs about 60 some bucks. So I'm like, I can cough that up and if she'll leave that sign in for three weeks, I'll get another job. So, right. Right. So, uh, Dane asking, do you do use the affordable best selling or best choice packages in Marquette? I, I mean, I'm in Traverse city, but, um, no, 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 no. The, the CRM, the CRM. Oh, um, shit. I don't even know. I signed up for it in May and I, you know, they have some add-ons and shit to where one of the things that you use is to help get reviews and stuff. But I want to say it's 35 bucks. I so forget you, what it is it's on auto pay and it's worth every dime. They could charge me a hundred and I'd pay it, you know? Right. So, so, um, uh, so is this something that you're glad you got out of the insurance company and start doing pressure washing? Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I mean, I wanted to be my own boss for a while. And one of the other things that sounds bad, but I, I have a lot of friends that are business owners and they got a lot of that damn funny money, PPP money, you know, and I'm like, well, I at least need an LLC and a bank account. So in case that happens again, I'm not going to be left out with that missing on that free cash. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I didn't want to start over um, in a different territory or different company and i i was just kind of done i i was making the money i could and they changed the contract and you know life changes too in any business but that i was getting i've had it <laughs> so yeah I, i'm no regrets man turning back and you know the biggest thing is it's like i know i need to turn it into a business instead of a, a good paying job but i knew this summer i just wanted to focus on self getting the experience so I can duplicate it with others. So let's talk about that. What do you mean by um, a good paying job versus a business? Well, right now it's obviously a pretty damn good paying job. You know, I go to work, I've had some help here and there, you know, some younger guys coming with me, but for the most part, I can do it on my own, make my own schedule and go out and make some money and come home and do my thing with the family. But I'm 47 years old, and I don't know how many more years I should be roof monkeying around and doing this and that to where I should, you know, build, turn it into a business instead of a job and duplicate what I've done this year and, you know, kind of just take it to scale. So that's my next step in the journey. But I knew this year was just going to be me and the me and the truck type of thing. Working on the business, not in the business. Correct. Yeah. 
And that's a that's a definitely that's a hard thing for a lot of people. Now you might be a little bit better where you've been in man sales and all of that kind of stuff, but that is definitely one that's hard to do. And a lot of people struggle with that just because you know they a lot of people have the the um, the employee mindset, and to get out of that employee mindset can be a lot can be hard for some people. So. Yeah, I mean, and there's nothing wrong with the other end of it, too, the whole lean and mean type of thing, you know, but, you know, where I'm at, and I think a lot of us are, you know, it's, you know, you don't want to be working like that forever, you know. Well, and and the thing about that is, I know that's a model, but you also got to remember, if you get hurt, I mean, I've, I've got, there's a guy up in Baltimore who's twisted his ankle, or twisted his ankle really bad, he's got to be off for six weeks, and he ain't got no money coming in. So, yeah, Celine and Mean can be good, but on the other hand, you better have some money put away. Otherwise, you're going to be lean and not mean if you're not careful. Yeah. Oh, exactly. And that's where I'm at. You know, like I said, I I mean, I'm in good good shape and healthy and everything, but shit happens, man. Like I said, something simple, freaking pulling on a hose and stepping a little hole in the yard. You know, I don't know how that guy monkeyed up his ankle not hard i mean we're all doing stupid shit every day in a sense you know i was on top of a roof walking a peak today you know what what could happen what bad could happen yeah you know nick sick was on his motorcycle on a saturday and got hit by a truck and guess what he came to a screeching halt at that point you know all business come to a screeching halt where if you've got systems in place and things like that to keep things moving you can still keep getting paid. You can still keep doing the things that you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of where my head's at, but that's what, that's kind of the next step for sure. And that's where I definitely know I need you guys need this group and your guys, you know, the experience and of it, the group. So the one thing that, um, I know, and this is going off of a little bit of a rabbit trail of, on you know of why we got to keep following the system why we got to keep doing something um actually i was talking to benjamin gregory today and he just pulled a huge it's probably going to be a twenty thirty thousand um, dollar commercial bid and it's all from linkedin doing his linkedin somebody was at a meeting and they said hey i got this guy on my linkedin and gave him his number and so that's why it's important that we keep doing marketing we keep doing the things that we need to do you know it's just like you were saying i don't teach nothing you know fancy fazzle dazzle anything special at the end of the day there's a few ways that you're going to get business one you're going to get your gmb that's the first thing you need to do that's definitely a thing you got to do is do your gmb and get start getting your reviews and putting up your pictures two Yard signs. I love yard signs. I've seen a lot of people make a lot of money off of yard signs. In fact, I could about say yard signs probably made more people out there more money than any other type of marketing. You know, they everybody wants to go and do the easy. How can I just put a little bit of money and get lots of returns? But it's not always that easy. So that there and and so just following those processes, putting out yard signs, doing your Facebook, all of that kind of stuff, going next door. That will grow your business. That will get you more than what you will ever think. You know, and you know, you've done seventy thousand in a couple months here. But here's the deal about it: at the end of the day, it can be done. You know, don't think that that's a huge number. Yes, that's a huge number. But at the end of the day, you know, just put down your head and keep going. You know, I was talking to a guy that he started his business about six or seven years ago, working on lawnmowers. He's pulling in two hundred and fifty to three hundred thousand dollars just working on lawnmowers, and yes, it can be done. How did he do it? By yard signs. About three or four years ago, you no matter where you went in this county, you seen one of his signs. Well, guess what? That's what happens when you start growing. You do good work, people start referring you, and the next thing you know, you've gotten bigger and bigger at the end of the day. So make sure that you keep following the process you keep doing the things over and yes sometimes you're going to do the things that man is this really going to work jason jason is this really going to work and it does work but if you give up and you quit doing your five around you quit putting out your signs your phone's going to quit ringing if you're not answering your phone well that's a whole nother story but 
So what are some things? So obviously you said yard signs have been really good. Um, tell me one thing that you failed in your business and how you overcame that or what are some things you learned from failing? Um, you know, like I said, really at first I was like kind of on the, the, the podium. I was like, damn, that seems like a lot. And just get over that as soon as you can and build a re reputation of, yep, I'm not cheap, but I'm good. You don't want to be cheap. You get what you pay for when you're cheap, you know, so um it's i wish i would have bought more yard signs you know up front i went cheap and i burned them out knowing that i didn't like them i went and hung them up all through town nailed them to to light posts and hung them up everywhere and the gal today was like i stuck her yard sign in and she's like oh good now i got one like everybody else in town you know so um yeah so i mean bought more signs and so it because that's a controlled hard cost i mean the google thing is nice you know getting some leads that are coming in and all that and it's just you have to have your google page and you probably have to spend a few bucks on it um on the ads i think because everything feeds it it, it builds your legitimacy too you know to where they see your sign and um but I've been pretty fortunate in, in all that and with some of my background, I'm not afraid to ask for that money, but don't be shy to ask for the money. Be the, be the top quality, not the cheap guy. Are you trying to do any commercial work of going in and knocking on doors that way? Yeah, I have been. And in fact, what like I said, my, my off season might be a touch longer than some of you guys. Um, so I'm really going to focus on, building those relationships here and when it's slow um, turning over those rocks there's a lot of hotels here um, for sure there's a lot of commercial buildings I, I've done a few I've done some condo a couple condos I've done office building um, I'm doing a different office building and another thing is don't be afraid to talk to your competitor everyone's kind of got their niche and I right when I got my so the, uh, my truck lettered that same day I went to a track vent for my daughter and the, this guy was called Northern Lightning Wash he come up he's like hey man you power washer and get the answer well he's he sent me at numerous jobs because he does fleet washing he doesn't want he doesn't want to touch houses right and you know there's another company that they focus on on, on different stuff too so everyone kind of digs into their niche and then uh, there's a company called fish window cleaning and we do offer some window cleaning. Um, it's part of our package. Um, I don't do a lot of it though. So here's this window company. They're sending me, they sent me two deals that I've got this, this week. Um, and they're, they're helping me get into this property management company that I've been working to try to dig into too. So, um, yeah, your competitors can be a gold mine too. <laughs> good to know them and they know you and so so um dane had a question here um since you're in sales what's a good response you give to people who said may say you're too expensive you know um well i did have a story last night like i said that uh the gal that said oh your price was higher than i thought it would be and I just build the confidence back into them. Like, listen, we're going to take really good care of your home. Um, we're we're insured. We're legitimate. I'm an LLC. You know, I, I come back with that. I'm a legitimate business. I pay. I'm, we're gonna. We're paying our taxes. We have insurance. Taking the time to go through training. We have the proper equipment to make the job easy and get it done. And that's. I've heard that a few times, and that's. You know, if they actually reach out and talk to me, because sometimes I think I get told I'm too expensive and they don't give you an opportunity to, to win the business. They don't ever respond to your to your bid or anything after the fact. But if but when they do, you just go back to um, building that value in, in yourself and your company and how you're going to do them right. And, you know, remind people what you get when you pay for, you know, you, you want something that's cheaper. Yeah, well you might get what you paid for. So and, just and, build, 
how to build that value in your in your service. And I like how you're saying about building value because a lot of people don't understand that even those little things that you might not think is value is value to the customer. You know, and, and, and some other things that are value. You'll show up on time. You'll do what you say you're going to do. You know, showing up on time. You know, he, he, he was saying how he uses his CRM to, um, you know, say that when we're coming, when we're there, when we're done, you know, those go a long way. And you would be surprised how much that goes to people, especially in this day and age. You know, a lot of people, they can't get nobody to work. Nobody wants to work. I mean, what's the number one here you think? Nobody wants to work. You can't even get doctors and nurses to show up. I talked to where I used to work at, and his wife works at the local hospital down there in Georgetown. And they're paying people, they're making mandatory stay over, and then they're paying you $750 on top of your regular pay. So they can't get nobody to work. Of course, they're firing a lot of people, but that's besides the point, you know? So it, it it's one of those things that just, I don't know what the deal is with today's age or today's deal, but, you know, a lot of people don't want to work. Now, that being said, once you do start getting employees, you got to take care of them. You know, a lot of times we talk about taking care of our customers, but when we get employees, we're like, they ain't worth a the crap. They're not, they're a piece of crap, blah, 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 blah. You know, and so we have to take care of our employees too, just like we do our customers. You know, it, I was listening to Brian Haggerty, which I will have him on here. Um, and he was saying how, you know, we, you it's about family in, in in a small business. And, you know, we have to take care of our employees. We have to do these things. And when we do these things, good things happen to you. So that's the, the, the thing behind that. Um, I have a question here about old Angie's list. Um, um, only thing I'm going to say is it can work. I'm not a big fan of it. Same as Home Advisor. The only thing I'm going to tell you is, is how they respond back to you. That's how you respond to your customers. You call them relentless. You don't give up. You keep calling back because they call all the time. And so oh. that's the biggest thing with that. Yeah, Angie's list, they are overly relentless for sure. Uh, agree. Don't be afraid to reach out to your competitors. I did, and they don't do roof anymore, and they refer all the roof cleaning to me. You, you know, and if you would have been like, oh, I can't do that, well, guess what? You would have lost out on all those roof cleanings. Because now that you talk to them, now they're giving you a bunch of work. You know, I had a competitor here, Mr. Wash, Robin Wash. He gave me all his commercial. He didn't want to do commercial. So he gave me all his commercial work. Um, you still there, Jason? Because you went completely yep. black now. Yeah, I had to go jump in my truck. Um, I can't wait until people start going back to work. <laughs> Oh, so they're hovering around your job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Jason, I'm at nine thousand ninety nine hundred for this month, and it honestly was the slowest month, but best revenue. I know a lot of people that way. Um, DJ was a good month, and he was um, very, you know, he was at the huge and with me. Went to Connecticut, and still going to have one of his top months. So um, it is definitely something that can be done. So. All right. Um, so what um, I've done, went, we done went through all our questions. So what's your goal for this year then? Well, I, yeah, I initially in May, I looked back and said, if I could do, you know, 50,000, I can justify change in pace. So, you know, I'm making a push for a hundred, you know, and should be able to get to a, you know, it's gross dollars, but it's pretty profitable. You know, it's especially now I got everything. It's really profitable now because I got it down. You know, I can go out and bang out a house really quick, a roof really quick, get the job. Everything's really, I know what my expense is going to be. You know, it's becoming profitable right now for sure. So, yeah, I want to get to, you know, six, you know, do a hundred grand gross in the first year. Good. And I'm, we're going to do it. You know, it's, it's, yeah, I know it's going to happen. So what are some things that, being that this was your first year and you've done well, what are some things that were kind of 
um, on the part of the, will this work? What Jason's saying, will this actually work? Um, you know, it was more of like, can I work it? Because I do have, I, I believe in systems and following. I'm not one to reinvent the wheel. And I've listened to your story enough time and all those YouTube videos before signing up for your membership. And, you know, it's like, just, I just knew it. I'm like, if I just do exactly what he says, I've always been pretty good at doing that, you know? <laughs> so I'm not one to reinvent the wheel. Like, just come in and do what somebody else has done before you. And then you do make it your own a little bit, you know? And I don't want to, I'm not verbatim guy, but, you know, you bring your own self into it. But it's... You know, in home services and contractors have a bad rap out there. So you need to show them that you are different. You're a premium service and you're a premium price for it because you're going to communicate with them. You're going to tell them you're on your way. Hey, if you're going to be there, you said you're going to be there at 10 and, you know, you're going to be at, after 10. I send them a thing through Mark 8 and say, yep, I'm going to be 10. I'm going to be 10 minutes. I'm, you know, I'm going to be there in 10 minutes just so they communicate. And it's so nice. You don't have to dial the phone. You know, you just hit a button and they, and it just communicates with it. Cause you know, contractors have a bad rap out there and it's a well-deserved black eye in the industry in a whole, but you know, we can set ourselves apart by doing the simple stuff, doing what you say you're going to do, you know, taking care of them and, you know, ultimately do what you have to. I had to buy some lady and this was weird. I mean, I had told her, prior to starting you know i'm like hey just so you know i she had a lot of really nice vegetation a real nice landscape she's like a green thumb and i wanted to let her know i'm like hey turn on your i'm gonna water all this down but you know turn on your lands your irrigation after i leave just to make sure well she got really nervous and she's like you should have really explained that to me i'm like i did before i even started but you know she was bound to shade so i went and bought her a plant at the local flower shop and gave it to you know she wasn't home and left it there and i just went out of my way to make sure she was happy and she's you know ultimately she's still not really happy she's just a karen or whatever a little bit you know but but you know i can gladly if, if she ever writes a negative review or bad mouth me i want i did what i could to try to make her happy and that's that's all you can do some people you're never gonna make happy no. <laughs> um, Jeremy put, I got my little brother into pressure washing. He's doing it for a year and already been to the $100,000 mark. It's awesome, it's man. Um, what equipment do you have? I just have a four gallon a minute. I, you know, Hey, that's another thing. Yeah, I did. I was a little nervous at first. I bought, oh, forget the name of the company, but they had a, a non Honda motor one. And I bought that to save 400 bucks. Well, I fucked up there. So, but I have a, a machine that's four gallon, you know, 4,200 PSI, four gallon a minute. And that's a Honda motor. So I have a, two of them, but that's when I'm towing around, I have a literally a little $700 trailer from farm and fleet, a water tank with the five and a half or seven gallon a minute electric pump the ever flow or what you say to buy that's what i bought so i have a i batch mix my roof stuff i have a toolbox a water tank three reels and a machine and a, and a uh, surface washer behind a, on some pink little freaking tractor supply trailer but i thought you had to go buy a ten fifteen thousand dollar trailer to make seventy thousand or a hundred thousand dollars no you know what i did we got our stimulus check or our tax. Our, we never got our stimulus. One of our those damn stimulus checks. So they, they lumped it into our a tax return. And I rarely get any tax return money. So this year we did. And I was like, all right, I'm going to turn this free funny money into some recurring revenue, you know. So that's what got me looking to Indeed. where I can stuff across you. But yeah, I think my initial investment was. With everything, like I lettered my truck and the LLC and the insurance, it was probably four or five grand total up front, you know. But then one of my first jobs was seven, six hundred and eighty bucks, seven hundred bucks. So I'm like, oh, this is gonna be, this is gonna be gangbusters, you know. <laughs> so yeah, I I I don't have anything fancy. I got 
can't remember the name of the company because it's all the same shit, you know. It had a little aluminum frame with a Honda motor and a four gallon minute pump. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's, that's and an X jet. <laughs> so are you X jetting or downstreaming? X jetting. Gotcha. So you're carrying a bucket around. Yep. Uh, quality still knock on doors. I was asked to give an estimate on apartment complex. Walked into the wrong office. That was beside the one I was supposed to be at. The manager said, "Well, we need an estimate as well," and got both. Keep flipping them rocks, baby. Oh yeah. Keep flipping those rocks. Yeah, I love to get in a subdivision, you know, because you know you're going to be there a while if you do your five rounds and drop your sign and treat everybody right. You keeping up with the Joneses, man. You getting the getting those little honey holes and you'll be there for a minute. Are you good thinking about doing Christmas lights this year? Yes, absolutely. And I need to spend the time to figure out how the hell to do it. So I need, yeah, yeah, I need to figure that out. Cause it, this might market would be good for it. I've talked a handful of my customers are like, Oh, what do you can do in the winter? I'm like, Oh, I'm looking into Christmas lights. Like, Oh my God. Yes. It's just a good area for it, you know, for sure. I don't, you know, not every area might be great for that. But I look at it, everyone's got a house. They do need that. They need it clean. I mean, it's their biggest investment. Whether they choose to or not, it's a whole nother thing, you know. But that's why the pressure washing works for, you know, everyone needs their house cleaned at some point in time. You yeah, and all the rich they, people need their Christmas lights put up. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> we'll be there for them. Um. So, obviously, you just started. What are some things that you might tell a new person um, to be encouraging to a new person? Just work the system that's out there. You know, Jason's system does work. Um, you know, it's a do, make it yours at some point, but you have a blind faith and, and do what others have done before you, and it always works out, you know if they're legitimately had 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 success i mean and there's a lot of people out there that are doing this i've heard some of the podcasts you know people like well why are you giving away all the secrets and all this information for free it elevates all of us if there was three more of me in town guess what we i we'd be getting I'm more we'd be at 850 a ticket because we'd be driving the price up because we're all know what the fuck we're doing so i mean it's just good so have a blind faith in a system and give it time to work um but the phone will start ringing answer the phone and it's it's just been good so far man it's been good real good yep that's why i want to that's why that's why i wanted to have you on um jason i will see you in raleigh september 17th and 18th i just signed up for your class um i will be having a pressure washing and a christmas light class that week um Let's see. Since I've been doing this, I caught myself looking at neighborhoods from the freeway and looking at all those dirty roofs. I see you on your website that you have back to school deals. Do you have deals on the Google? I do not. Um, I don't have that. I don't even know what it is. My wife sent that out. You know, that's what happens. Um, actually, I don't think there's a deal on that. You can try it. I don't know. Um, George, I live in Flint, Michigan. I also service the surrounding areas. I started in June of this year. Business was going good at first, but now starting to slow down. I just started Google. Uh, um, keep it up. You got, you do have some competition in Flint. Um, Jeremy Maines there from Pink Pro Wash. The good thing about him is he charges a whole freaking lot. Um, you want to talk about high? He is high, which I'm proud of that because he makes a lot of money doing it um he's one that has been doing ten thousand dollar weeks last year he just quit his job as a garbage man been doing ten thousand dollar weeks forty thousand dollar months um jennifer which is his girlfriend was like he made more in the last two months than he did all year long being a garbage man um so there's definitely money to be made there um, Zig Scott's around that area. There was actually a post on the Facebook where um, the Zig posted that one guy was three hundred, he was six hundred, and the other dude was twelve. Or Jeremy Main was twelve hundred. 
So there's definitely money to be made in that area. So keep pushing, keep trying, keep doing the things you need to do to make that happen. Um, is there any app for sending emails? Marquette sends them out for you, don't they? If you do, yeah, the there's, the, yeah, there's some. I mean, I I kind of control it all right now, but there is some things you can put on cruise control as I build up my database um, that I'll focus on in the spring to try to get some of the you know late winter to try to get those early months filled out. Um, but yeah, Marquette, I'm only I. I love it, and I know I'm only using probably 25% of it. You know, I'm not even utilizing it, but it's – I get great compliments off from it, you know, and it, it makes me look legitimate. I've been asked a few times, are you a franchise? And, you know, and that just lets you know you're doing shit right, man, that, you know, you're not chucking a truck, although that's all I am. I had a Tahoe. I put letter. I have an 08 Tahoe with 230,000 miles that I threw some letters on because you got to you got you know you got to be invested i didn't want mag look right little trailer that looks decent there's a sign on the back of that and i fucking litter my signs all over this damn town <laughs> so yep um andrew put don't reinvent the wheel find one that works and spend the hell out of it <laughs> yeah there you go that's a good one uh what's your opinion on delvin 12 pumps they work decent they're okay Cheap and but yet good. Um, let's see. Do you know anyone doing this in Oregon? Yep, because you all got carpet moss up there. Um, so carpet moss is in Oregon. We don't have much of that. Do you, you probably you got you probably don't have that much up there either, do you? There's a ton of moss on roofs up here. In fact, I'm considering. Ordering a batch of signs that say "roof and gutter cleaning" because the the margin, the profit's so good on them, and there's there is, I mean, just being so close to the water and everyone having trees, and I mean, I, there's roofs to be done. I drive around doing the same thing, getting chubbed up, looking at all the moss on the roof, saying, "Oh, you know, right there's a quick, quick seven hundred and fifty bucks." <laughs> So. And, you know, talking about that, I know I was talking, to, like I was saying before, with Jeremy Mang down there and with Pink Pearl Wash. You know, he was saying that, you know, they are getting $450, $500 to go clean out gutters. You know, you want to talk about feeling bad at doing a $600 roof clean. What about doing a $400, $500 gutter clean that you're there for 30 minutes and you're in and out and moving on? And you don't even have chemicals at that point. You know, they rinse them out and be done. So, you know, don't be afraid to charge people. This is the thing about it. This time, of, everything is going up, and everybody knows that everybody going everything is going up. And if you're not going up with your prices, then it's going to be hard to stay around because everything is going up. You can't get equipment. You can't get stuff because they don't make it. So make sure you're charging enough to be able to grow a business and be successful. You know, like I said, it's about growing a business, not growing a job. We want to grow a business so that way we can get to the next level. We can do the things we want to do to be able to grow a business and be successful. Um, let's see. I've seen a question. How come my Facebook ads won't work? What's the trick? Keep testing. Um, it's not just about Facebook ads either. You need to be doing the posting and all of that stuff too. It kind of all works together. Um, in fact, I would say that that is better than anything, the, the free stuff. All right. Well, we're going to jump off here. Um, what is some things on the way we go here? I know we talked about words of encouragement, but what is one thing that you wish you would have done in the beginning that you, you're just figuring out that you should have done in the beginning? Oh, probably did it a few years ago, <laughs> but, uh, no, sir, that too, but um, I've been a little bit for, more prepared for, you know, how busy I was going to get. But there's a learning curve, and, and be patient with yourself because, um, you know, I like I said, I pr pressure washed as a job, basically, when I was a laborer for the union years ago. But, you know, they just threw a hose in my hand and a, a scrub brush with some muratic acid you know and things like that so but be patient with yourself 
give yourself an opportunity to, to get good at what you're doing if you're just getting started. I mean, because I was, a, that's what I was a little frustrated. I knew I'd have to get out there and do it and get my own, you know, hey, do the, lay out the job, think about what you're doing. And, you know, but that was probably the biggest thing. Just, I was a little, I'm a little impatient to begin with. So, um, but, you know, I've been really blessed and fortunate. I haven't had too many pitfalls because I knew, you know, everyone was saying August was going to get slow and it slowed down as far as my, my quote request right after the 4th of July, the national cherry festivals here in town too. And it's on that same week. And you could just feel a collective sigh of relief because it gets fuck busy in this town. It's a big to do. And um so and it did slow down, but I because I was quoting and following up and I hit in some of my bigger like a couple condos came in an office building to make my August great, you know, because I didn't have the volume of jobs much like um the guy that you said went to the huge into the Connecticut with you. But some of those bigger jobs fell into place just from being out there, having your signs out there, having your positive Google reviews, having your Google My Business and being present, man. You know, just you gotta be out there and and there's there's been days, you know, I'm like, Jesus, I, I got scared on a roof for the first time in my entire life my dad was a roofer i'd know how to run around a roof but it was hot their fucking bees came out of this dormer blew up my plan on how i'm getting off there and for the first time i looked down and said how am i getting off this building <laughs> and i've been on a lot of different buildings through the years so you know but and that's why you do need to charge because you're doing things that other people won't do or don't want to do those getting three, four hundred dollars for some gutters. You know how many times people tell me my wife won't let me do this shit anymore? Yeah, because they know you shouldn't. And I probably shouldn't either, but I'm gonna charge you handsomely because because you can't and shouldn't or you don't want to. So Or they say I fell off the roof and now my wife won't let me on there. Yeah. My favorite customers are the ones who have tried to do this themselves before. My first job, the lady I never even used the surface washer before until her house and she had run it of machine. They did their house and she started her driveway and she had a big driveway and, and she spent three days out there with the pressure washer. Cause she had it for the weekend. And she's like, I told myself I'm never doing that again. My favorite ones that have, cause they never complain. They know that it's work. And I'm like, well, just don't be mad when I make it look easy. Cause I have the right tools, equipment and, and, and uh, qualifications to do it for you. Yeah. I always like seeing when somebody used the red tip on their driveway and I'll be like, how long did that take you? Oh, that took me, that took me six hours and I couldn't walk for the next six day or next week. <laughs> yep. They're the good ones. You could tell I, Oh yeah. I did a nice patio for a guy. He did that same thing. he, he had about a two foot by two foot square and he said he called someone and it was me and I answered the phone, bid the job and, and we got it. You know, it was, that was another one. It was some surface. It was a pretty nice little patio. It was 500 bucks. I was there in like an hour and 15 minutes, man. And he didn't bat an eye because he, guess what? He knew he was going to be there for 15 days doing it on his own. Yep, exactly. Awesome, dude. Well, um, there's a question. When is your class in North Carolina? It will be October 17th and 18th, or I'm sorry, September um, 17th, 18th, 19th. It's Friday is Christmas, or Friday is pressure washing. Saturday is the marketing, aerial, aerial training, ladder training, all that good stuff. And then marketing and how to grow a business. And then Sunday is Christmas light. So, um, if you just come for the two day for pressure washing, it'll be Friday, Saturday. If you come for the two days of Christmas lights, it's going to be Saturday, Sunday, or you can do all three. And Christmas lights is definitely worth it. I am having a class in October also, so there will be a class in September and October. Um, if you have employees, we have an employee training that they'll just get the one day training of Christmas lights. So that way you can do that. Um, do you have to do both? No, you do not have to do pressure washing and Christmas lights. You can either do pressure washing, you can either do Christmas lights, 
you can do both or if you have an employee you can just do the employee training um, but obviously the marketing is is well worth it um, and so that is definitely something that you might want to think about um, you can go check that out at pressurewashhelp.com slash in-person training or you can go check out pressurewashhelp.com slash free that's my online training um, my christmas light training online is going away um, it will be gone because I'm redoing a whole new site. It will be gone as of September the 21st, I believe it is, or whatever that Monday is after training um, is my goal. I'm going to have a whole new training. It's going to be on its own website. It's not going to be mixed in with my free training or my regular monthly training. Um, whoever's, whoever signed up for it right now will still get it, but anybody for that will not get it. It will be a lot more than what that is because I'm putting a lot of effort into it. I've been working on it for about two days already. I got it tied up about, um, about 10 hours. I probably got about 50 more to go before that. So um, that is what I'll be working on in the next three weeks is to get this thing up and running. Um, it won't just be Jason's in there. It will also be Donovan. So it'll be me and Donovan putting all our heads together and, and making a great training. So that way the Christmas lights will be something that you can make $100,000. I just talked to Jason out of Louisville yesterday, the guy I trained three years ago. And this year he's going to do over $400,000 just in Christmas lights. So it is a great profitable business. If you want to go check it out, you can go check out christmaslights.io christmaslights.io but again i hope you all have a great night and i'll see you on sunday hang see on you. jason okay.